But let me ask you. Let well, me, you just, just seriously. What, I, what I, option does listen, it have? I, no, please don't ask me no questions like that. Listen, 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 <laughs> listen, listen I, I can't answer that. Options, listen, are, options are real slim. <laughs> let me ask you a question. I, I have to correct you on certain things. Okay. Because I listened to your interview All right. that you did. Um, and when you said that Alpo, you know, Alpo did have it done to Rich Porter, but he had nothing to do with the little brother. Right. Preacher, That's what I heard. Yes. Preacher was separate. Preacher and the little brother was separate, but he didn't, because Alpo didn't have anything to do with... I, I told you, I didn't know the details yes, you did, of that. you did say that. But I did, I, I, but what my recollection was, mm-hmm. they were pissed off at him about the little brother. So it really wouldn't have mattered, because they, 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 they all together. believed, yeah, they it. all believed in New York that he had killed the little brother, right? But, 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 but let, me ask you, let me ask you this honest question. And it's two things I want to say. Alpo said to me on the phone, you know, we go back. Tell me if this makes sense to you. <laughs> he said to me that we praise Rich Porter. Which I like Rich Porter. I think his story is, is, is dope and he's fly. I like fly stuff. Look, look I'm jiggy. But <laughs> What's the matter with me? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? But he, he said that we he said that why do why do the people do not praise or throw a party? This is what he said. This is his words for the brother, uh, Darnell. The twelve-year-old brother that got killed, his finger shut off. Do you kind of agree with Alpo when he says something like that? He said we praise that martyr. We make a martyr of Rich Porter, but we don't even acknowledge his little brother. His little brother who was twelve years old and got his life taken at a short. Well, here's time. my here's my feeling on it. See, that's where the moral outrage comes from from me because okay. because we don't do stuff like that. We. If we like Rich Porter, if we think he's a good dude and, and, and we want to carry his memory with us, God bless us for doing that. But you can't just stop there. You have to, you have to take it to your whole community and say, hey, listen, man, we've lost two important people. I, you know, I don't know Rich Porter. If, was he a drug dealer? Was he you know, uh, in the same business? I'm not going to praise him. But if people in the, in knowledgeable of him thought he was – a worthy person and a nice person, God bless him. You know, God's mercy extends everywhere. Yes. All right? And mm-hmm. so we have to – I'm not going to ever suggest that, you know, being good for, for Rich Porter and his brother, that should be equal. But what, what just drives me crazy is that when we put anybody of these guys up on a pedestal, we got to do that with a little bit of a, you know – moral understanding of what we're saying there. Understood. That we're saying that, you know, people like Wayne Perry and Alpo are worth praising and worth considering as when they just about ruined both their neighborhoods, their communities. Just about ruined it. Real quick, because, you, you you know, you, you start to get red again. Um, <laughs> Alpo, do you know why Alpo got shot in D.C.? Do you know about that? Yeah. Can you tell us why you got shot, what you found out? Because D.C. is that way. What happened mm-hmm. was um, Cliff Cobb ran most of the Northeast. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Jim Jim and Jawbreaker mm-hmm. were the two hitters for Cliff's little crew over there. In, in, I'm trying to remember. It's, it's, it's the, uh, what the hell neighborhood is it? It's really off a of Catholic university. It's kind of like, you know, anyway, uh, it's totally irrelevant to you. But uh, all they knew was some dude from New York was coming down and, and acting big. They, they didn't care who it was. They, they don't know Alpo from Beans. Now, if you talk to them right now, they'd probably tell you all about how they had done background on him or something like that. You know, but they've never been brought to, to task for it. But they shot him. And... At the same time, we were shooting dudes from L.A. We were, I mean, when I say we, I mean my community, D.C., was shooting, you know, Jamaicans. We were shooting anybody that came into town and tried to uh, run a, run an operation. Um, did you ever hear of a guy named uh, uh, L.A. Roy Summers? No. Eight Trade Gangster Crip, one of those, you know, big deal drug dealers from out west who tried to bring mo- – do you know who I'm talking about? Used to bring a lot of uh, drugs into the East Coast. And he sold all around D.C., Maryland, Virginia. Wouldn't never go into D.C. Sid, excuse my French, those d- in D.C. are crazy. Mm. And so he says, I don't deal with them. I ain't going to deal with them. And he testified because he was 
part of the whole, you know, California scam with the R Street crew. Mm -hmm. The point is, is that um, he's, you know, he was telling it like it was. He says they would do a deal with you. New, or New York or DC guys would do a deal with you. Expect a discount the next time around. If they didn't get the discount, they'd kill you the third time around. That was that was the rep that was going on outside of New or DC. And so anybody that came to DC and wanted to operate, and you know whatever drove Alpo down here, whether it was the killing of Richie Porter or not, I guess it was right. Whatever drove him down here, put him in a position where he had to rely on, you know, people like Jim Jim and Drawbreaker, and that ain't people you rely on because they will kill you. And so they took a shot at him. That's what my understanding of it is. So I wish I would have been able to prove the case at the time. So how did you find out about Wayne Perry? Because first of all, you did a, you did a, you did a, uh, I don't know if you did the interview with a, uh, a guy named Gully? Did you do an interview with a guy, that guy? I heard about an interview on this channel, Gully TV. It was... I didn't do an interview with Gully. Oh. <laughs> Gully took my interview that was done with a retired FBI agent in Philadelphia and apparently decided to put it on a YouTube thing. How did you feel about that? About that interview? Yeah. I thought it was a ripoff. I thought it was, you know... And to this day, the man's never said, you know, a, a word to me. And he's used my, my picture and my words. Uh, and I don't know if he's making any money off of it. And I really don't, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about the money. I'm just worried about the, you know, the absolute uh, nerve of the guy to, to, you know, think he can uh, do that for somebody. Would you would you have Because it was a good, I heard it. That's how I learned about it. I mean, you. back in the day, I might have done something real bad to him. <laughs> 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 Would you have expected a call? Would you have liked a call from him or reach out like, you know? To- At least an email, maybe? <laughs> like uh, something. So, 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 okay, so it wasn't, it was with a, in a retired FBI. Yeah, agent. I, I, I'd, I'd worked all the, 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 the details of that podcast out with the retired agent. Okay. And the other thing I didn't like about, because he cut off the important, well, to me, it wasn't important, but to me, it was, it was uh, part of, that whole story was I wanted to tell the story of the price that FBI agents and police officers pay to do this kind of work because it's dangerous mm-hmm. and, you know, people ought to be remembered. And we want to get into that. But before that, I want to know two about two people and then I want to get into the remembrance. I want to know about how you know about Rayful Edmund, right? And how did – first, let's start off with Wayne Perry. How did that come on your desk? How did you find out about Wayne well, Perry? Uh, as I told you before, I was I doing the R Street crew, and the R Street crew immediately led into the First Street crew, which we got in, uh, that group done right after R Street. And we did, uh, 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 a close friend of mine, an associate, did the P Street crew, which uh, involved a guy named Kenny Man Bryant, Ken- Kenneth Ray Bryant, who was another scary killer that DC, you know, had you know, operating at the same time. Mm-hmm. And uh, during the course of all of those investigations, Wayne Perry was the beast over the top of all of them. What is his story that you know? You, the you only know. thing we knew is that he, he, he was probably uh, fingered on every murder that happened in D.C. I mean, somebody, a body would drop today, and within an hour or two, somebody would call in and say Wayne Perry did it. Well, we knew that was bullshit, but uh, what it really came down to for me is that, well, we're going to have to pay attention to him eventually. But then I got a call from the captain of Homicide after uh, Alveda Hopkins was murdered. Uh, when Alveda was murdered, she had uh, agreed to testify against Wayne because she believed that Wayne was responsible for the murder of her friend uh, Froggy, James Henson. Does this mean anything mm-hmm. to you? Um, and, they ki- and so Wayne killed her. Well, the cops knew that Wayne killed her, but they had nothing. She was left out on 295. There was no crime scene. There was really, you know, no witnesses. They, they had nothing. And so Captain Homicide calls me up and says, listen, y'all just finished doing well in R Street and P Street and uh, First Street, so can you come over and I want to give a case over to you. And he gave, gave me Wayne Perry. So I, it was, that was it. So once he gave you Wayne Perry, let's go into the, how you found out about him, like the, the stuff. So he was, we don't know why he was killing the way he was killing. 
Because mm -hmm. he wasn't a, a hustler, he wasn't a drug dealer, but he no. was an extortionist, and, right. you know, which means that he would go to the top drug dealers and receive money from him because they were scared of him, yes? Right. So that, was, that was the plan. I think a lot of the top drug dealers thought that they didn't have to pay tribute to him, and some of them, you know, regretted that. Because <laughs> really? he would take them and rob them and, and, and do lots of things to them, like, you know, burn them with cigarettes and... And he had, a, he had his own little crew. That was a kind of a side hustle he had, that uh, if there was anybody that he had decided wasn't cooperative with him, they might find themselves snatched one night mm. and spend the night with him and his, and his boys. Mm. And it wasn't pleasant. And he'd kill some, and he wouldn't kill some. So, let's, he... It's kind now, of crazy. Sounds it sounds crazy, yeah. A lot of a lot of when I listened to the interview that you did, you were speaking about a lot of the witnesses that were murdered by him. Mm -hmm. um, you found okay, so you found out Wayne Perry. We got to look into him. The, the the detective called you, and then you move forward. Now you move forward. Now, when more bodies are dropping, that's when you're looking into him more. What is the next thing that well, comes on your desk about him? It in the beginning, I was running into brick walls. And uh, but I had I had solid intelligence from reliable sources of information throughout D.C. By that point, I'd really we'd built up a cadre, our, meaning my squad, the the agents and the cops that I worked with, had built up a, a a base that we knew we were starting to get to a point where we knew almost immediately who did what, and. Um, there was a double homicide that happened over in Potomac Gardens that I had heard about, uh, and I knew that, that that particular homicide, they charged uh, another dude that I knew about. I'm trying to remember what his name was. Um, hang on. That's why I brought my notes with me. Oh, I'm, I'm surprised the first time he used the notes, man. Yeah, Everything yeah. else he, he remembered pretty much the whole show. <laughs> yeah. Well, he said he had bad memory. The big, no, the biggest problem that I've had over the years is I used to have the pretty good memory, and then I've just lost a lot of that. You seem to have a great memory you now. Pretty good to me. Yeah, no, I, I didn't have any issue with you. First time using the notes in what two, two hours? Okay, <laughs> yeah. Calvin Asa Smith was charged with this double homicide, and I had three different informants say he wasn't by himself. He was he was working with Wayne that day. So immediately, uh, Ace got charged with, with, with the killing. And so I said, well, I'll just, you know, sort of shepherd that case along through the U.S. Attorney because the U.S. Attorney I was dealing with at the time was a good guy, and I thought, well, you know, I'll see what happens uh, with the case and, and see if I could get an opportunity to talk to the witnesses in that case because obviously they had witnesses that they said that were going to, you know, uh, implicate Ace in it. I said, it's interesting because they're going to implicate Ace, but they're not going to implicate Wayne. So I never really, you know, I, did, I wasn't like being aggressive about it. I was just saying, okay, let's see what happens. So eventually, and the, and the, I think it was two or three witnesses, they were women. They lived in Potomac Gardens, and they were all, as far as I recall, they were all heroin addicts. And so they were trouble. And they're getting ready for the trial, and, of course, they needed me to cover them, you know, to put them somewhere. So I said, well, where do you want them? And the and U.S. attorney said he wants them in a hotel somewhere that's safe. I said, okay, well, you know, and I put them out in Virginia, and we had them safe. And uh, so eventually I got around to interviewing them, and I'll go through the whole, you know, step-by-step step with them, and I'm worried about, you know, their testimony because it sounded weird. It wasn't, you know, my idea of solid testimony. And the, uh, and the detective was working with it. She was, like, buying everything they said, and I was like, because I knew her, and I was like, you know, do you think that's really? She says, well, you know, you know how it is. I mean, they're junkies and they're this and they're, you know. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, if you're satisfied, you're satisfied. But I'm telling you, you know, everybody's telling me that Wayne was there. Well, we can't, you know, we can't get into that. So I go into him and I just say, you know, was Wayne there? And all three of them turned white and they, you know, weren't white. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Uh, you know, never mind. Kind of disregard. I'm not going to press you on something. 
So they testified in the trial, and all three of them fell apart. They got destroyed on the stand by the defense attorney. And, but Asay got convicted of a gun charge because he couldn't get around the fact that he had a gun. Somebody had apparently had the gun connected to him, and it was the gun, one of the guns that was used to, to shoot these dudes. And they were, you know, Andre Hinkle and another guy. Um, later on, oh, well, at that particular point, so I'm like, I'm dead in the water. These witnesses aren't worth a damn. And so they're not getting me anywhere. And so I've got to work another angle on this. Um, but later on, when I talked to Wayne, he admitted it. He said, yeah, I did that. So I knew that that case is kind of where things started for me. And that was, I was getting the right information from, you know, the people that were talking to me. Um, trying to remember what led us in the right direction. Okay, so I, I said, I'm going back to square one. Mm -hmm. One thing that we know is that he's running around with Alpo right now. And I didn't know Alpo from Adam. But, you know, FBI New York had a warrant on him for kidnapping and something. And um, my partner, Angelo, had gotten this confession from him when he'd been shot up. And so our drug squad was putting together a drug case on Alpo in, uh, uh, in Northern Virginia, which I said, well, you know, that's going to that's gonna work out. Because, you know, it was all basic testimony from him directly. And so I thought, well, that's going to be a decent case. I said, I just need to get Alpo out of the way. Because he's making Wayne turn into a vampire. I never get a chance to really do anything, you know, to really uh, target Wayne as to where he's living. And, and sort of the normal business that you have to go through to start really working a, 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 an investigation. you got to really start getting a handle on uh, the details, and we weren't able to get a handle on the details because he wasn't living a normal life. Mm -hmm. We found out later that he and, and Alpo were going to, like, uh, motels every night, or they had a place up, you know, in Commodore Joshua Barney that they would spend night, a couple of nights at, and then they would go someplace else. And it would, So they were just rotating around the city, and, and uh, then I heard that Alpo's uh, wife slash girlfriend moved down to D.C., and she was, and he, seeing her... Then I developed a couple of really good confidential sources on him, including a person that knew uh, knew his wife and several of the girls that were sort of friends at a at a beauty salon, and um, they were the ones that gave me where Alpo was going to be the night he was locked up. The ladies. Mm-hmm. Not the ladies themselves, but my my source that knew all these folks, and so uh, I happened to be out of town, but I called up you know uh, the case agent, the the drug case agent who was uh, uh, Scott Yao, and Angelo. Of course, Angelo knew him. Angelo had really been the only one in D.C. that had ever seen the man, and so I said, "Well, he's going to be at so and so tonight." And so they rounded up a team and they they grabbed his ass and got him. And they grabbed them based off of what, though? What did they want? Out About of? what my source told me, that where he was going to be. He was, he was. No, I know, no. But what was the reason? Was it because of the drugs? I, I, yeah, they had the drug case. They had the the kidnap case. Okay. All of that was like already baked in. Okay, he was it. a fugitive. Got so it. all okay, we had it. to do was you gotcha. know put his ass in cuffs, and he was going to be in the decision making process that I told you about. Got it. So all, to me, the main thing was get him out of the way. So I can, you know, spend time on going after Wayne. Do you think that Alpo was smart because he was able to sort of, to some people, they say manipulate Wayne? Or do you think that they both had a genuine love for each other? No, there was no love. Um, There's no love. Okay. At, least not, at least I don't believe there was. Um, Wayne was getting money. That was what Wayne was about. He was getting money from Alpo because Alpo was making sure that he didn't get shot at again. <clears throat> and Wayne was making sure that he was protected in D.C., that he wasn't going to get snatched by anybody. I mean, whatever they were doing was working, and I don't think Alpo had the, the knowledge of the area enough to know. I mean, I'm sure he was smart enough to be able to figure out, you know, if I go to a hotel every night, I'm, I'm probably not going to, nobody's going to beam on me. But he also knew that he had to do business, mm. and the only way he was going to do business is if he had somebody like Wayne with him. Because that way nobody was going to come at him from the other side. So if I'm going to do drug business, I got to 
have somebody that's heavy next to me who's going to scare the hell out of whoever, you know, would take a run at me. And really the only person that was serious enough for them to worry about was Frey. So Frey wasn't scared of Wayne. (laughs) Hard to say. If you talk to Frey, you'd say no. And if you talk to friends of Frey, because Frey was an old timer. He was a, you know, a big time gangster that had been, you know, been a bank robber when he was a kid. And I mean, a serious, you know, career criminal. He wasn't like, you know, he wasn't going to be somebody that was scared of Wayne, but I'm sure he, he knew that Wayne was, you know, like a cobra in the grass. And that's what you got to, you know, that's what you, that's the way you got to think about it. How did Wayne Perry find out about all the, the, the witnesses that he was able, because I heard, like I said. Well, he killed interview. people that were right. If, 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 if all of us are in, in at a club mm-hmm. and we go outside the club and we have an argument and I kill you, who else am I going to kill? I may not kill this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, and this girl tonight, but eventually I'll get around to it. So he visually remembered, basically. Oh, yeah. And that was kind of his approach to things. In other words, the normal murder, like, you know, you see a murder mystery and you go, wow, that guy was smart. The murderer was smart. He was, Wayne wasn't all, you know. I mean, he... he his way about him was smart, but what he operated on was power. His source of what he did was power. So if I kill you in front of all these guys, everybody here right now is scared of me, right? Mm-hmm. And then I rock you to sleep by smiling at you and telling you all this good stuff and all this and that and the other thing. Two weeks from now, I'll kill you. And you get, you're scared and you're scared, mm-hmm. right? But, and so who, who's got the power now? You do. And you know also that I've killed a bunch of other people. So that, mm. so the way I see it, with Wayne, it was all about power. It was all about, I don't care if you're, you know, a dangerous drug dealer. I don't, because I don't, you know, because I'll, yeah. I'll take the hit. You want to kill me? Go ahead. And here's something that, that Wayne understood that I don't think very, that very few people understand. I understood it because of my history in the military. Okay, when can a cop shoot somebody? A cop can shoot somebody when... Normal course of business. When can a cop shoot somebody? I think when... when? Did they get shot at? Or yeah, when they're, when, they're, when they're in fear of their life. Yeah, fear of life yeah. So in other words, if I'm a cop, i got to react. Wayne didn't react. He acted. Hmm. Very subtle difference. In other words, if I'm standing talking to you and being nice to you and all that kind of thing, you're not expecting me to pull a gun. No, and, and you're probably if if you if I pull a gun, you're probably thinking, well, you know, he's going to tell me something first, like you no good skunk. Then at least I can react. Wayne didn't work like that. Wayne was boom, you're dead. That's how he worked. I'm going to ask you a question, and I know you didn't want to talk about this, but I like those notes. I would like to see those notes too, please. <laughs> you um, ain't seeing this. This is my secret stuff. <laughs> <laughs> how did you find out? How did you find out about, because that's the big news now, about Wayne and being or dealing with other men? How did that come to your desk? <laughs> no, why are you laughing? What are you laughing for? I, I want to know how you found out. How did you, you know, that story drives me crazy. You know I mean, that. I heard I about mean, it. You know, let well, me you tell you something. It. It's let your you, fault. Look, look, I, apparently. Yeah, yeah it's your fault. Uh, I, I heard it from like five different people that Thomas Dozier was his, his boy in Lorton. That's how Thomas Dozier got into it. Who was Thomas Dozier? <laughs> Thomas Dozier was his in quotes flunky that everybody, you know, some of the people talk about. Thomas you Dozier, know you, you know because of you that came out. It wasn't because of me. Well, look, as every, I found out, as far as I know, every everybody that I knew knew about it. That's, and that's and that's what somebody. And, and, else and let me tell you, let me tell you something about Wayne's. I don't know. Sexuality. Six, Wayne's sexuality is that, you know, I, I talked to probably a hundred women that, man, he's nice. <laughs> he's so pretty. I'm, come on, man. I'm like, okay, he must be doing something right in that department. So I don't know what it is, but the fact that, that a man in prison, and it was like Alpo was one of the funny ones talking about, he's the one that told us ain't nothing better than a fat butt boy. That's what 
Alpo told us. Wait, hold on, hold on. Dad, you ask him. Dad, you ask him. Dad, did he ever tell the FBI? Dad, ain't nothing dad, better no, than a fat black boy. I, I, I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna. <laughs> dad, no, 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 no. <laughs> dad, slow down. Hold on. Dad, dad, slow down. Are you sure that don't say that he said I, I, you sure? I'm not saying that he's that way. You're no, you're missing. No, you're I, missing. I, I, are you that, sure that, that he that's said what, that's that? What it sounds like. He said that because I heard it and I was like, "Damn, he's you know." That's I I never I never heard that from anybody else. I heard it from Alpa. And basically, what he was saying was that you know, uh, sex is sex, and it's no, 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 stop yeah, it's, it. Whatever, Just stop it. It's not like a stop it, Dan. Stop yeah, it, but Dan. You're, but, but you're the, all these readers got all upset with it, but they don't care that he killed a hundred people. No, we I don't. mean, look, I, I look, I don't give a damn whether Wayne is is gay or not, and I don't really think he is gay. Okay, mm. what I think is that. You know, when when he was in Lorton and there was nothing around, but you know, somebody that that was willing to 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 take care of him and 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 give him the sexual gratification that he wanted, he was okay with that. Do you think that Alpo was saying that just to pull your string or to crack a joke? Because probably. That, yeah, because we never. Yeah, heard yeah, yeah, but probably no, not you. Can, if if you got a chance to talk to him, you just ask him. Did you ever say that to the FBI agents? And if he says no, then he's lying. Well, he's, a Harlem, he's, he's lying. A, he's a guy from Harlem. They crack jokes. And, 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 and cracking jokes is fine. He, he, he was cracking jokes with us, and that was part of it, but it was in that same context. Got it. That's what so, I'm so, telling so, you. So I heard those before. That, that, that's an outside no Harlem joke to me, man. <laughs> yeah, slow down. Right? Slow down. Slow down. What's going Harlem, on in Harlem? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Harlem hey, 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 watch your mouth about Harlem, both of <laughs> y'all. I like Harlem. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Did the, did any men, because you said the guy, Tom, what's his name, Thomas? What's Thomas Dozier. Did he admit to? Did you ever Thomas speak? Thomas Dozier's to, dead. He, he died. He got killed by. Okay, never mind. By, don't do that. Don't do that, Dan. Don't do. Don't 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 don't, don't hold out on us. He was killed by a guy named Pucci, who was Frey's nephew. Thomas Dozier was. And why did Frey's nephew kill him? Man, you nah. I, mean, I can't. I can't go there. Because respect. It's already controversy. Right now, it's controversy. Right mm -hmm. now, to this day. It, Frey is dead, right? Yeah, but he didn't. Was he killed? Frey was killed by Michael Jackson, a dude from the Madness Shop. By right where? The Madness Shop up in D you, know, you see, I'm talking DC <laughs> stuff. So in, Michael yeah. Jackson. Michael so Jackson was a drug dealer who worked with a bunch of guys up northwest, and he came to Wayne and Alpo and said, "Your boy Frey's coming at you." And both Wayne and, and Poe understood that. They weren't going to ever get next to Frey. They weren't going to be able to get at him. And he said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. But you got to give me a key. Kilo. And they, yeah, go ahead. And so Michael got a couple of guys, and they jumped in the car with Frey and put a bullet in his head in the back of his head. But, but, but. but. Mm -hmm. Why was Michael Jackson able to get who? First of all, who is Michael? The only Michael Jackson I know. I no, 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 no. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a this is a, a drug dealer who's in prison, probably for a long time. Still, at least I hope to hell he's in prison. Michael Jackson. That's Jackson his name. is his name. And he, so he was close to Frey. That's how he was able to do that. Yeah, because you know Frey had contacts mostly in Southeast, but you, you got to understand DC is a small town. I mean, everybody knows everybody, and Michael Jackson was the type of guy who Frey would probably let in a car behind him. In other words, Frey wasn't going to let Wayne in, in a car, and he wasn't going to let any of, of uh, Wayne's people in the car with him. That wasn't happening. Did you ever speak to Michael Jackson to find out why did he... Why did he... Well, that's a funny story. Tell me. I want to know. Well, we locked him up for that murder. For Frey's murder. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought, wow. And but but he was also deeply involved in a big drug operation that was going out of Lewisburg with uh, with uh, Rafel. And so the U.S. Attorney's Office said, "Well, you can lock him up for the murder, but we really want him on this drug stuff." It's another part of the political mm -hmm. bullshit. Yeah. Um, so I was like, "Okay, well, since it's my warrant." I get to go on the arrest, don't I? <laughs> and they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to go on the arrest. And, and the guy who wanted to do the whole thing 
um, was a, one of the drug agents who, he was a friend, but he had kind of gone off in a different direction uh, on one of my cases that I didn't particularly like. And I, you know, I was okay with it, but you know, <clears throat> I was like, you know, this is just inside stuff that mm-hmm. really is totally irrelevant. But the but the bottom line is, is I'm laying down on the on the on the the the, the bed in in the because they wanted him arrested and brought to a hotel room instead of brought to the office. They didn't want anybody to know that he was being charged, you know, with any kind of crime. And I, to this day, I, I'm like at a loss. Well, what they didn't tell me was as soon as they locked him up, they said. Don't worry, you can you can talk to us. You can tell us anything you want. We won't use anything you want you say against us, against you. And I'm like, I wasn't there, so basically they're giving him his Miranda. And I, anytime we arrested somebody, you give them a Miranda, and you give them a legit Miranda. You say, hey, you know, if you need a lawyer, we'll get one for you, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the normal Miranda rights. But then we say, would you like to talk to us? Do you want to waive your rights? And they, if they say yes, then we go okay, and then we're interviewing them. We're talking to them about anything. Well, so I come in at like 20 minutes after he's locked up, and I'm laying on the, on the, on the, and so I'm just bullshitting with him. Hey, Michael, what's up? So, you know, I'm the one that's got the warrant for your ass. And he's like, oh, really? <laughs> and I said, yeah, dude, so, so, so tell me, why'd you kill Fred? Man, that's some bullshit. I did, man, 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 man. And I said, well, man, we got three witnesses that tell tell us that you did. What the hell were they doing? Were they looking out the? Were they were they standing around on the street while I was looking out the window at them? Well, that's exactly what the witnesses saw. When he was driving down Bryant Street, he's in the back seat of the car, and I had three civilians, regular folks, that lived on Bryant Street who were looking at the same thing, especially after the gunshot. And they saw his face under the street light. And I said, well, dude, I didn't tell you anything about a car. And I didn't tell you anything about you looking out the, the window. And I didn't tell So, yeah, that's exactly right. They saw you stick your face out the window when you shot the dude. And he's like, well, wait, I know. You know, so he starts backpedaling on me. I said, man, enough said. I'm good. <laughs> I don't need nothing from you. And so I left and I wrote my report. And then I was told that they'd got, given him a free ride. That nothing he could say could be used against him. So you, we don't know why he killed him. Oh, I know why he killed him. I mean, Poe knows why he killed. Him. Ask Al Poe next time we talk to him why Michael Jackson killed Fred. So where does Sean Branch come in? Because Sean said that you had mentioned him. Come on, man. Dude, man. Do, come on, Sean. I like Sean. Sean said, <laughs> Sean, no, he's, a, he's a nice guy to me. Sean said that you had. Yeah, to, because because the the ten families of people that he's uh, of the people that he's killed haven't come to you and said, "Man, that's wrong that you're talking to Sean." Hold on. A lot of us no. have. Wait, wait. Look, wait. you, just, pe- no, wait, you wait, don't understand. It, no, Sean, understand, Sean but, Branch. Hold Sean on, hold Branch hold on, hold on, hold on, was a, a dangerous. Human being. You're going against your belief as far as in God because you said God, you said this, you said God's forgiveness or, or what you said earlier. He hasn't been, he hasn't been <laughs> paid the price for the other people he's killed. But you also said. Are we I, and God's forgiveness has got to, got to involve God's, you know, that, that, that our penance that we have to pay. I got it. But you also said that you're not here to do. I mean, we I, can. Look, we can, right. we can I, I, I got you. All right. You're with me. No, no, no. I'm, with no, you. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> what I'm saying to you is. I'm, I, I, what I'm saying to you is. What I'm saying to you is, is that um, um, anything Sean Branch tells you is going to be self-serving to Sean Branch, which is fine. Mm. If I could, if I could, if I could have charged him with. With his participation in a murder, I would have definitely done it. But I'm partly responsible for uh, the fact that he got convicted of the Michael Green case. Okay. Partly. Because I gave the guys who were working the case the right witness in the Michael Green case. But they also had him charged with the Monty Glenn murder, and somehow he got off of that. And he also beat another case because the witness who testified against him testified in— a hearing on, or t- testified in a trial on Friday afternoon, and he went home for the weekend because court, you know, took off the weekend, 
And lo and behold, the witness got killed over the weekend, and they never got an opportunity to cross-examine that witness. Mm. Now, how do you think that happened? It's a, it's a miracle. It's not a miracle. Don't be sarcastic. <laughs> Don't be sarcastic. But, but what I'm asking you is that, but how, so, but how did you first hear about his name? How did it come? Sean? Because, because Sean said that you said in the interview, I didn't hear this part, but he said that you said in the interview that he went to go speak to Wayne Perry mm-hmm. about Michael Jackson. But Sean said that wasn't true. He said he didn't know where you got yeah. the information from. Yeah. That's what he said in the interview. I know. I know what he said. It's, he's wrong. He said he went to talk to, to, to Wayne about Demencio Benson's murder. That's what he said he did. Demencio Benson, yes. All right. Now, let me tell you something. He and Wayne were on the street together for months before Wayne got locked up. And he rightfully would have gone if he wanted to talk to him about Demencio Benson. Demencio Benson had died a year earlier, remember. This is ni- Demencio Benson got killed in summer of 91. Yeah, yeah. All right. Sean's out at least by April of 92. Wayne doesn't get locked up until mid-June, mid-July, I'm sorry, of 92. So he has two or three months that if he needs to go talk to Wayne about his friend Demencio, he could do it not in the Prince George's County Jail, which is, if you're going to talk to somebody about a murder, it's probably not a good idea to go talking to him in jail over the phones that could be, you know, tape recorded. I wish they were, but they weren't. That's just a, you know, an unfortunate circumstance of that particular jail at that particular time. But the bottom line is his story doesn't make any sense. But then how And Okay. Thomas Dozier dies a week later. But how will we really know We don't. And if and if we did, oh, I know the conversation took place because I have the I had the logs at the time. I had the logs from the jail. I'm like, what the hell is? Because I'm talking to the guys who are working Sean Branch. I'm like, what the hell, Sean Branch visiting Wayne? Because I got I got just they would periodically send me his visitors log, (coughs) and so I'm getting this. I'm like, and so I'm talking to the 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 guys who are working Sean, and they're like, we don't know what they're talking about. Dozier gets killed. I was try- getting, I was trying to talk to the U.S. Attorney's Office into letting me go at Dozier again because Wayne's locked up, and I figured now's the time to get Dozier and enroll him because I he would be able to tell us, you know, how he got Frey's gu- the gun that killed Frey. So, you're not putting it together yet, and I'm not going to let. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not going to make it easy. I'm for about it. to put it together. So you're trying to say that <laughs> that Wayne told Sean to. I'm not going to put it together for you because you're you're on the right track, but I'm not going to tell you any more than that. Well, hold on, Mr. Dan. We, we got <laughs> we got we got we got to be sure that this information you write is right, man. Can't just be put. Hey, there. look, Mr. Dan. If I would have thought I was cause enough I, trouble I already, <laughs> I know. But if I thought <laughs> if I would have thought ready. I was right, I would have locked his ass up back then for it. Except that he already got locked up for killing Michael Green. So the point the point is is that you know everything was working at that we didn't know who killed uh, Thomas Dozier until I got called months later months after it all happened and they told me Poochie did it I said why in the hell did Poochie do it Dozier didn't have anything to do with killing Frey and then it all sort of struck me now later on I talked to Wayne. And all I can say is, Wayne told me what he told me about the whole circumstance. And it involves Sean Branch, you're saying? Yeah. 